name is Sarah Ray. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about how I got diagnosed with fibromyalgia, how that doctor's appointment went, and what exactly fibromyalgia is and everything I found out while researching it. So, you know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications of when I upload, and let's start the discussion. The first things I want to say about this is that for a while now, I have been experiencing a lot of fatigue, a, a lot of different symptoms, right? That just didn't make sense. And I just wrote them off as being a part of my Crohn's disease, right? Things that my Stelara, which I take for my Crohn's, weren't exactly fixing, right? So my joint pain being a major one of those symptoms. But also things like my fatigue was really bad and it just wasn't getting better no matter how much I slept. And just my insomnia in general, I, I just didn't understand and I just thought maybe it was because of all those nights I worked night shift before I was disabled that maybe that messed with my sleep and, and maybe just being a kid that grew up in the hospital and you just don't sleep in there. So I just never knew how to sleep at night, period. Maybe that's the reason why I have insomnia. And then I have a hard time thinking. And a lot of times my words don't come out right or, or I, I can't think of what I'm trying to say. And, and sometimes it gets to the point where I'm looking at an object like this tissue box and I can't think of what it's called. And I couldn't think of why that was. And I mean, and there's other symptoms besides that, that like my headaches, why I, was, I would have migraines so bad that I would hide my head under a pillow and, and just lay there for hours with just this stubborn migraine. And Tylenol would just take the edge off just slightly. And I never understood why I was having those things and I'd go to doctors and they would just never have an exact answer. And my my family would always joke and say, well, you belong on that show, um, Mystery Diagnosis, right? So I just ignored it. And within the past year, I started noticing I got these really bad joint pain, right? Like to the point where I would sit down for maybe even two minutes and get up and my joints would hurt so bad. They would be so stiff that I could barely walk. I would be waking up and my hips would be hurting. I, I kind of told you guys this a little bit in the past but for for people who are new here watching I'd get hip pains when I woke up so bad that I would almost start crying immediately when I woke up um, and that would include knee pains too and um, I would also like wake up and my whole body would be stiff from like my neck down to my ankles like and I just started realizing I was like you know this is unusual if this was Crohn's related, which there is joint pain related to Crohn's disease, and I know that because I am very well versed in Crohn's disease. I have researched it my whole life um, to make sure that I am well educated so I can speak on and have a hand in my care when it comes to Crohn's disease. So I know joint pain can be a part of Crohn's disease. Well, shouldn't my Stelara take care of that? And it's, it, it's not touched it. Well, something's got to be wrong. And I've gone to my GI doctor and he's 
like, well, we'll send you to a rheumatoidologist. And, you know, I never got a call. And eventually I went to my a regular doctor and we got that appointment. And they came back with... Um, before that appointment, I wrote down all the symptoms I've been having, even if they weren't related to, like, the joints or anything, just anything I could think of that was just out of the usual that I've been having, because sometimes, if, I've been told, like, by my dad, <laughs> I'll credit him this, that he told me that Sometimes you got to write down things that that don't involve what you're there for because they might see that and think, ah, that's this. And that's what happened. See, if I didn't write down those headaches, fatigue, um, insomnia, you know, my anxiety, depression, all of that, PTSD, all of that and talked to this doctor about it, he wouldn't have came back and said, ah, yeah, you have fibromyalgia. He would have, well, he would have seen that anyways because he went through my chart and saw that, that I had all of those things by the medications that I'm on. Um, but he wouldn't have, if, if I wasn't on any medications, he wouldn't have saw that. Do, do you kind of get what I mean by that part but because I said something and because I was in my chart he came to the conclusion that I had fibromyalgia and here in a second we'll get to the symptoms and everything of fibromyalgia but um but he also went through like a list of different possible things before saying yes that's fibromyalgia like lupus because one of my test results came back that I could possibly have lupus it's called an ANA test and it was positive but that also could just be that you have an autoimmune disease and he said and asked me if I had any symptoms of lupus and he started naming off the symptoms and and I said no, and um, he told me the reason why it was positive. Well, technically it was um, so low it, they would have said negative, but it was positive because my mom has lupus and because I am um, her daughter and a direct descendant of her, my test is going to be positive and I will have no symptoms of it. I found that pretty cool. Um, but they also went through Raynaud's disease, which is where your fingers and your toes either get really hot and turn almost purple, or no, almost like a, yeah, purple, um, or they get really cold and, and turn almost white, um, well, well, white, I should say, but, um, and, and then, um, they also went through, um, the joint pain related to Crohn's. And he, he felt like it, it wasn't that because of the fact that my slayer wasn't taking care of that. And um, he, he said, yeah, fibromyalgia um, is, is what I had. So, um, and then he talked about uh, different ways to manage it and control it. And, that, um, and, and we'll go over all that here in a minute. But um, he didn't want to put me on any medications because I was on too many medications already um, that it would interfere with what I'm already on. But for me to do what I'm already doing. Now, let's talk about what fibromyalgia is and how it's diagnosed and what causes it and what the symptoms are and, and the, the tests and and everything. So first we're going to start this section off with a quote by Lady Gaga on what she says in her own words is fibromyalgia. So a cyclone of anxiety, depression, PTSD, trauma, and panic disorder 
all sending the nervous system into overdrive and then you have nerve pain as a result. Now, there is also not an exact known cause for fibromyalgia. In fact, there's not a lot known about fibromyalgia. It is still something that puzzles doctors and researchers to this day. I found some um, terminology in regards to fibromyalgia that I found pretty interesting and thought I would share with you guys. Now, doctor terminology, fibro means painful tendons and ligaments, myalgia means painful muscles. When it comes to Latin terminology, fibro means fibrous tissues, myo means muscle, and algia means pain. It was recognized in 1987 and is a relatively common chronic pain disorder. And it was recognized by the NFMCPA, which stands for the National Fibromyalgia and Chronic Pain Association. That is a mouthful. And if you see me looking down, it's because I have all my notes down here, and it's a lot of notes, and I was not able to about to memorize all these notes so I apologize but stick with me now 4% of the world is affected by fibromyalgia that includes 5 to 10 million Americans and 80% of these patients are actually women and when it comes to talking about fibromyalgia it's actually um, if you think about is a disconnect between the body and the nervous system and like I said kind of like the the nervous system is firing out of control now let's talk about diagnosing when it comes to diagnosing fibromyalgia it's actually a hard thing to do because there's not one standardized test for the condition or to confirm the diagnosis and this is because you actually look normal and there's not anything to actually test. There's no blood, fluid, anything you can actually physically take and test. And this is seen really in, in mental health as well. For the longest time, people just thought mental health was all a, a joke and in your head because you went by symptoms. And, and until recently was it really a big thing and turned around and said, yeah, this is a serious and we need to take this seriously. And fibromyalgia is the same way. It's off of symptoms. And only is it recently has it been more accepted in the community because it's off of symptoms. And there's nothing physical you can take to say, yeah, this is what you have. It's kind of just basing off of knowledge and, and seeing what you have and what you're explaining. So what they do look at, however, is your medical history which if you remember me telling you about how I explained they looked at my chart and saw what all medications I was on and saw that I had those things those anxiety PTSD headache meds, all those things that are some of the symptoms that are of fibromyalgia, which we will be getting to the symptoms next. Insomnia, I'm on sleep meds for. A lot of that stuff was in my medical history and in my med list, so they saw that right off the bat. Um, examining the patient to make sure a different condition isn't present so, like in my con my case, they looked at other conditions first before saying, yeah, you have fibromyalgia. They made sure that it wasn't something else. Um, they also do testing to make sure there isn't an underlying illness. So, like blood tests, 
x-rays but they try to limit x-rays because they don't want to expose you to too much um, UV not UV but too much um, x-ray stuff whatever it's called you know you know what I'm talking about anyways um, and also they check you for um, the places you have pain so one of the things they did for me was they checked all of my joints and asked me um, to say which joints I was having pain when he pressed on it which was pretty much all of them because I my joints hurt so going off of all of that information they were able to come to the conclusion that I have fibromyalgia now this is a long-term condition as well, which is why it is called a chronic condition that stands for long-term. Some of the symptoms are trouble sleeping, so insomnia or oversleeping, morning stiffness, headaches or migraines, painful periods, tingling or numbness in the hands or feet, Problem thinking or memory. This is actually known as fibro fog. Anxiety, depression, digestive problems. So um, they saw I had Crohn's disease and thought this could actually go hand in hand with um, fibromyalgia. Face or jaw pain, pain in the belly, dry eyes, and bladder problems. So you could have some of these or even all of them. Now, causes. Again, um, the exact cause is unknown. And same as for why some people get it and, and some people don't. But they have come to the conclusion by looking at what everybody that has fibromyalgia kind of has in common are some of the things like stressful or traumatic events, illnesses, anxiety, or other mental health disorders, as well as some of the risk factors like um, sex, which, like I said, it's seen more in women than men. Uh, family history, which um, in my case, it is seen in my family. I have a few family members who have fibromyalgia, in particular, um, my aunt, my mom's sister, she has it. And um, I've actually talked to her about it um, recently. Um, and other diagnoses, uh, like other disorders, and um, age. So middle age and older, it's more seen in. Now, let's talk about pain. And this varies from day to day, so you kind of wake up and never know what exactly you're going to get that day or how much pain you're going to be in that day. And it could range from a mild ache to an intense and unbearable pain. Because remember, uh, fibromyalgia stems from an abnormal nervous system response. So we're going to talk about three different types of pain Real quick, we're going to talk about chest pain, back pain, and leg pain. Those are the three pretty common pains you see in fibromyalgia. So chest pain, it's in the center of the cartilage that connects from the rib bone, oh, the rib bone, the rib cage to the breastbone. Now this is actually a very sharp pain, and I've gotten this before. It and if you have fibromyalgia, you'll know what I'm talking about. It is this sharp pain you get in your chest where you can't take a deep breath in. And, oh my God, I hate getting these because they last for a, a good while. Mine, I've had last for two minutes where I can't take a deep breath. It's happened in public. And there's nothing you can do to stop it or alleviate it. You just, it just has to happen. And you have to wait. And that's it, you know. Back pain is the most common. 
And what you can do to help with this is stretching and strengthening exercises to help support the muscle and soft tissue in your back. And actually in fibromyalgia in general, um, exercising, um, there's certain exercises you do to actually help um, kind of protect your joints and that soft tissue where you are getting that pain where the fibromyalgia is attacking so it's not going in the gym and going full out exercising it's, it's certain exercises and I don't know what exercises those are yet I don't see the physical therapist until December um, so when I find that out I will make a follow up video to this and let you guys know but exercising is actually very good and we will get to um, like that part a little later on what you can do to help manage fibromyalgia but um, leg pain can feel like you pulled a muscle or stiffness it can also feel numbness or um, like your leg is very heavy now some of the common trigger points in the past people now they don't do this so much anymore but in the past they were diagnosed by if they had at least 11 out of 18 of the trigger points around the body and they would check this by pressing firmly on those joints which include like the back of the head the outer elbows tops of the shoulders the upper chest, hips, and knees. So those are some of the um, points that they would check. So some of the treatments for fibromyalgia are medications, so things like antidepressant, prescribed or over-the-counter pain relievers, also self-care strategies and lifestyle changes. It is neat to know that there is no cure for fibromyalgia. But also some treatments is good sleep habits. I would say these are more like managements than treatments. So um, good sleep habits, exercise and stress reduction techniques, um, physical and occupational therapies to protect joints, and CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy to manage stressful situations. Now complications let's talk about complications of fibromyalgia now this is a challenging illness to live with especially because of the chronic pain and fatigue that comes with fibromyalgia ah another symptom chronic fatigue forgot to add that but chronic fatigue is another big part of fibromyalgia. But if it's left untreated, work and daily activities become very difficult to deal with. And things like more hospitalizations happen, a lower quality of life can happen, um, a higher rate of depression. Actually, um, you are three times more likely to have major depression with fibromyalgia. And you have a higher rate for other rheumatic conditions such as lupus and Raynaud's disease and things like that. Now, management and natural remedies of or for fibromyalgia are things like, again, physical therapy or exercise acupuncture, meditation, yoga, tai chi, massage therapy, balanced healthy diet, and therapy to reduce stress that may trigger symptoms. I want to talk about yoga for a second. So when it comes to yoga, I was told to watch out for hypermobility. Now, I was asked if I was double jointed, which I am, and that is hypermobility. So if you're able to do like this, like 
and and be very like double jointed do weird crap with your body sure is a great way to explain it now they say to be cautionary when it comes to yoga because when it when you're double jointed when you when you have hypermobility your joints move in a way that they're not supposed to causing minuscule tears in your joints and tissue and and when you do yoga that adds to that irritation and, and tears and actually causes a more pain in that joint so they they actually say you shouldn't do yoga but if you do to do more of a gentle yoga so I wanted to add that in here because if you're double jointed or have hypermobility like myself to be cautionary and very or very cautious whichever word you want to use, whatever, um, to watch out when you're doing yoga. Um, but, you know, I love yoga. Yoga is very a part of my life. And I don't just want to stop doing it. I want it to continue to be part of my life. But um, the rest of them are um, things to definitely try now. I will put in the description box down below all the sites that I used to come up with all of this research that I did and I also want to tell you that some may experience remission type periods in which their pain and fatigue um, improves but again it is a chronic disease n not a disease a chronic condition which means it is a long-term condition but it can get better by controlling and working on those issues that cause the symptoms to be worse. Things like your anxiety, depression, PTSD, trauma, the sleep that you, you might have issues with, and all those other habits, you know, to get them under control, those symptoms, can help make fibromyalgia better for you in your life so you can have a better quality of life with fibromyalgia but again I will leave in the comment section nope in the description box <laughs> down below the sites I used and if you have fibromyalgia leave it in the comment section down below what you do to maintain your fibromyalgia and give me little tips um, on how you took it and and how you work with it because um, I would love to to know um, and I'll keep you guys updated on on how my life goes with that as always and anything new I come up with when it comes to fibromyalgia but as of right now this is all of that so um, thank you for listening I hope you guys found this interesting and um, learned something new if if you don't know anything about fibromyalgia and if you do maybe you found something you didn't know or i don't know but i hope you guys have a wonderful day and i'll see you guys in the next one bye